Hi, everybody. My distinguished colleague, Ben Scully, with whom I was with 28 years in the Dodger Broadcasting booth, always said that the best player he ever saw in his 67 years announcing Major League Baseball was Willie Mays. On Saturday, May 6th, 2023, Willie Mays will celebrate his 92nd birthday. He is the oldest living Hall of Famer that's still with us. He's also one of the top baseball players of all time. When you look at the lists of the experts, they will tell you that as far as they're concerned, number one would be Babe Ruth and number two would be Willie Mays. Signed to a $4,000 contract by the New York Giants in 1950, Mays got to the majors the very next year, but he got off to a horrible start. He had one hit in his first 26 at-bats, but he gained his confidence, and by the end of that initial month, he was hitting 300. Mays missed 266 games because of military service. On April the 30th, 1961, the Giants had a game in Milwaukee to complete a three-game series. Well, Willie walks to the locker room a few hours before game time and says to Joe Malfitano, who has the locker next to him, Boy, I feel bad. Joe said, why? He said, well, after the game yesterday, Willie McCovey and I went to this place that has wonderful ribs in Milwaukee. Well, no problem for McCovey, but May said, I think I might have gotten food poisoning. So, he said, I don't know if I can play or not. Malfitano said to him, on a scale of 1 to 100%, where would you rank right now? Willie said, 70. Joe laughed and said, you know, Willie, at 70, you'd do a better job for this beat team today than for some guy who will fill in for you who might be 100. Willie was also worried that because of his health at that time, he might have trouble swinging his heavy bat during that game. Malfitano said, why don't you use my bat, much lighter, why don't you take it to batting practice, see how it goes, and then use it if you like it. That's what Willie did. So why don't we see now how Willie Mays performed that afternoon using Joe Malfitano's bat. Braves meet the Giants in Milwaukee, and baseball history is being made by Willie Mays, who faces Lou Burdett in the first inning and promptly smashes his first home run of the day. Only eight men, including the great Lou Gehrig, have hit four home runs in one game. Today, Willie is joining that select circle. The Say Hey Boy was hitless in this series against the Braves until today, but he bounces back with a vengeance. His round tripper in the fourth is a 400-foot belt. The fences are bending today, for other players are on home run sprees, too. Before the game's over, there'll be ten circuit clubs, including the incomparable Willie's third blast in the sixth. Ball hit with everything behind it. The Milwaukee crowd is all for Willie now as he steps in the eighth and proceeds to poke his record-tying homer into the stands. Until today, Willie thought he was in a batting slump. Well, he found the cure by scattering baseballs into the bleachers. It was May's Day in Milwaukee as Willie found his page in the record book. Mays drove in eight runs that day. The Giants hit eight home runs and won the game 14 to 4. Here's a good trivia question. As of April 30th, 2023, the number of players who have appeared in a major league game, 20,326. That goes back to 1876. How many batters have hit four home runs in a nine-inning big league game? 
Only 15. Three more have done it in extra innings. I had the pleasure of announcing one of those 15 on May 23rd, 2002. Sean Green of the Dodgers slugged four, and like Mays, he did it in Milwaukee. On the first and fourth home runs that Green belted that day, I called the play-by-play. -play. But let's go back now to the bat that Mays used. After the game, it was placed in the spot in the giant clubhouse. But when the team got ready to board a bus to go to Chicago, a long search for the bat was unsuccessful. It was thought then the historic home run bat probably been stolen and we lost it for good. And a giant player got on the bus to leave Milwaukee. But there was a happy ending. A Giants executive who had to leave early for Chicago before the players picked up the bat in the locker room and took it with him. The next afternoon, Giants had a game against the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Mays again used the Malfitano's bat. In his first plate appearance, Willie stroked the ball well for a base hit, but he cracked the bat and it could no longer be used. However, the Cubs had some people who could help the Giant people and they were able to put that bat back together again and it was sent to Baseball's Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, where you could see it today. When Willie Mays retired in 1973 at the age of 42, he had a 302 career batting average, a record 12 gold gloves, and 660 home runs. At that point, he was number four in home runs, but now he's number six behind Bonds, Aaron, Ruth, Pujols, and Rodriguez. 24 was a special number for Willie Mays. It was his jersey number. And Willie played in 24 All-Star games, one fewer than Hank Aaron. Ted Williams once said, the All-Star game was invented for Willie Mays. Speaking of 24, that was how many years after Mays had retired that I chatted with him one day in Scottsdale, Arizona. We first talked about a sensational catch that center fielder Jim Edmonds of the Angels had made a few days before. Jim Edmonds made the great catch the other night. Of course, immediately everybody said, well, that reminds me of Willie's catch against Vic Works. But uh, Vinny told me that that's not the greatest catch he ever made in that 54 World Series. Do you agree? Uh, the, the 54 World Series catch wasn't uh, a, a really hard catch. I thought the throw was uh, was harder than anything because there was two men on base and only one guy advanced. Uh, I think the catch was a help, uh, but uh, looking at the uh, Happened to catch the other day, uh, it was two outs. Uh, I don't know if anybody was on base. They didn't ever say, uh, but it, it was a great catch. Uh, but you just can't go back 50 years and all of a sudden pick up a catch. A guy makes a good catch all the time. Uh, I remember saying to, uh, uh, I guess, White, to, what was that name? Frank White, uh, used to be with Toronto. Mm -hmm. Made yeah. a catch similar to what I did in the World Series many times. He was a great fielder, but... Every time someone make a catch, they always try. They got to have some kind of comparison, which I'm very flattered that well, 1954 and now what is this, 97? Yeah. Everybody comparing one catch to everything else, so that's you know flattering to me. What is the greatest catch you think you made? Uh, the one I think I made is off of uh, Bobby Morgan in uh, Everest Field in uh, 1951 when the bases loaded. Uh, he hit a line drive over second base when I went to uh, the uh, the wall, knocked myself out, caught the ball all in the same motion. Uh, the key there was I looked up. I was I, actually I was out really. I looked up and I saw two guys. I saw Jackie Robinson. I saw you know Leo DeRocher. And my first thought, why is Jackie here? Because 
I'm, you know, I'm catching the ball against the Dodgers, and all of a sudden he was there. But in my, and I soon found out later he was one of those guys that wanted to see what was happening to whatever was was was, was going on, and he was there to see if I caught the ball. You know, mm-hmm. that was my really, you know, best catch that I ever made. I think. Right. What a remarkable career! Congratulations, and happy birthday, number ninety-two to Willie Mays.